Hey everyone! A couple of weeks ago, I released this video talking about how to get started with game dev. If it's something that interests you, uh, you definitely go watch it. I promise you, you can start no matter what your current knowledge is. But anyway, in this video, I mentioned that a very good thing to do when you get comfortable with the basics of game dev is to try and recreate simple games. And that's what we're gonna do today. I really wanted to recreate a game everyone knew, so I started going through the absolute classics in video game culture. First up, of course, was Pong. And even though Pong is very doable, I thought it might be a little too simple to make an interesting 10 minute video about. Next up was Tetris. Tetris would have been a good challenge, but coding it would have been very heavy in math and I'm pretty sure nobody wants a 10 minute class on matrices instead of a game dev video. The game I ended up choosing is Space Invaders. I'm sure you've all heard of this game before, but if you haven't, here's a quick example of what it is. You basically have a little ship and you have to shoot at aliens who shoot back at you. Once you clear all the aliens, new ones appear, and once in a while, a red one moving fast appears and you get bonus points for shooting it. The aliens move horizontally, and once they reach the border, they get closer. The goal is to get as many points as possible and beat your previous high score. With the basics out of the way, let's get started on making our copy of the game. First of all, I created the project in Unity. For the art, I am using the vertical shooter asset pack I found in my ChatGPT video. I'm gonna start by placing the player down and making some controls. I created a new empty game object and called it player. I gave it a sprite renderer to display the ship and also give it a rigid body and a collider. I set the constraints to freeze movement and Z rotation, so that way the player will only be able to move horizontally, which is what we want. It was now time to create the player controller script and code some controls. I created an exposed variable for the speed and a reference to the rigid body and sprite render. I serialized them to make them appear in the editor, but actually this is useless since in the awake method we're going to automatically get these components. I then created the update method to get the input and the fixed update method to actually move the character. We now have working controls that simply translate the player from left to right. Now we're going to use the reference to the sprite render to create some fake animations. I removed the useless serialized fields from earlier and added a right and left sprite. Now in the update method, if the x value given by the input is negative, it means we're going left. So we switch the sprite to show the ship going left, else if it's positive, we show the ship going to the right. Simple enough. And we get this result, which looks pretty good for 15 seconds of work. Now time to create the enemies. Alright, so we're gonna want to spawn a lot of these, so we're first going to make a prefab to make it easy to spawn them. I created another empty game object, added the collider, a rigid body, and a sprite renderer just like the other one. I first added a box collider, but realized it didn't work great on a triangular enemy, so I used the default polygon collider shape instead. This caused some problems later, so I ended up changing it to an actual triangle shape. Now that we have some enemies, Time to spawn them. We're first of all going to create a game manager to handle this. In the game manager, we're going to set our spawning limits. Usually we spawn 5 rows of 10 enemies. By roughly placing enemies manually in the scene, we're able to see what offset feels about right to spawn them. After playing around a little, I figured that about 1.5 units of horizontal offset and 1 unit of vertical offset was the right amount. We then create a double loop that instantiates every row one by one until we have five of them. The inner loop executes 10 times to create a row, and once it's done, the outer loop adds one more vertical offset and the inner loop resumes with that new value. Okay, so upon testing, it does appear like something in my logic is flawed. Let's look at what it could be. It's certainly in the loop, so let's check the logic slowly. First of all, the first mistake I see is that my vertical offset is a positive value, but it should be negative, since we want to start from the top and we want to go down. The second mistake is in my inner loop, I accidentally multiply by the vertical change amount every single time, so every time a new enemy spawn, we go up. With those two small changes, let's go test again. And that seems good to me, except it's not centered. A few edits to the starting values should fix this problem. 
And there we go, that's enemy spawning handled. Now let's worry about their movement. Like in the little demo I showed you, they should move horizontally about every half second and when they hit a wall, they should move down. To do this, I could create an enemy script and attach it to every enemy, but that would mean 50 scripts would be running simultaneously, which is not the best practice. Instead, I'm gonna create the enemy tag and apply it to the enemy prefab. In the game manager, I'll have a method to periodically move everything with that tag. For the movement method, I simply get all objects with the enemy tag and move them by a specified move amount. To call this every 0.5 seconds, we'll use Unity's invoke repeating method and tell it to execute the move enemies function every half second. Time to test. And it works great. However, it's a bit fast. And as you can see, it also continues to the right forever, which is not what we want. We now have to detect when the edge of the screen is reached, make them move down when it happens, and then start moving in the opposite direction. To do this, I'll add an edge collider to the camera area. Now, in our game manager script, we can check when an enemy collides with it and change the move direction. Now, if we detect a collision and that collision is with an enemy, we switch the movement direction and we make every unit move down by the specified vertical move amount. I also changed the move delay from 0.5 seconds to 1 second since it was pretty fast. Time to see if it works. Okay, the speed looks good, let's wait until it hits the edge. Oh yeah, that's not normal. Okay, the problem is that with 5 enemies alive, it detects 5 collisions at once and so it executes the code 5 times. We're just gonna add a bool to make sure it only gets executed once. After the first execution, we stop this from being executed for 2 seconds, which ensures that all of the colliders have freed the space. It works great, but the enemies should move down instead of up. A simple negative value change should do the trick, and here we go. Movement now fully works as intended. Time to add some shooting. First of all, clear shooting. Let's create a prefab for the projectile. I chose this sprite from our asset pack, gave it a rigid body and a capsule collider. Next, I'm gonna create a script for that projectile. Basically, when spawned, this projectile will simply move forward and destroy an enemy if it hits one. If it hits an enemy or simply goes out of bounds, the projectile will also destroy itself. Now to code some controls. Pretty straightforward, if the player presses the space, we shoot a projectile. Let's test it. Okay, that's not what we want, but I think I know what's the problem. My projectile move function is pretty bad, let's change it to a translate instead. And there we go, that's much better. Projectile speed is still a bit slow, but we can easily change that. A detail about Space Invaders is that only one projectile can exist at one time. You cannot shoot again with your current projectile still exist. To implement this, I added the player projectile tag and made sure no current object with that tag exists in the scene before shooting. Great, now time to add enemy projectiles. The actual projectiles themselves are pretty much the same as the one the player shoots. However, the shooting part will be quite different. This projectile script will simply make it move and the player will detect the collision. In the player, we're going to create a variable for lives. If a collision is detected, a life will be removed. We're also going to put a condition to check if the number of lives equals zero and we'll display a game over in that case. Else, we'll just respawn the player in the center. Great, now for the shooting logic. Only the last enemy of each column should be shooting. But how can we know which one that is? Well, at first, I wanted to avoid every enemy running a script, but for our purposes right now, I think this will be necessary. Basically, every enemy will do a raycast, so they're going to check if the space below them is free of any other enemies. If it is, they shoot, else it means they're not the last one of their columns, so they'll do nothing. Just to show you, here's what a raycast looks like. Each ship casts a green line, and if an enemy is in that line, it won't shoot. Now that we can determine who can shoot, time to decide when they can shoot. For that, I simply decided to run a method every second and give them a 10% chance to shoot. That way, each enemy will shoot on average once every 10 seconds, but the moment at which they shoot is randomized. Let's test it. It works, but the enemies are all on the same timer, so sometimes multiple shoot at the same time. Also, the bullet is too slow. 
Changing the speed is easy once again, and to make sure enemies shoot at different moments, I added a random amount of time to the invoke repeating method to shoot. That way, they're all gonna be slightly offset when shooting. Wonderful! Now, when the player dies, I added a small function to clear all the existing bullets on the screen. And that is pretty much it! The only thing left to do is add score and a game over. I slowly created the UI for this and added a plus 10 score every time an enemy is killed. I also made all enemies respawn if none are left, so if the player killed them all, and I made a small game over screen. Time to test our final Space Invaders in action. And there we go, just like that we got a working Space Invaders. I put the full project download in the description below if you want to download it and try it out by yourself. I also encourage you to open it and upgrade it and add features you'd like to see for yourself, it's a very good exercise. And that's gonna be it for me today, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, follow me on Twitter, leave a comment, but most importantly, stay hydrated and I will see you next time. Bye!